Well, in First Peter chapter two, verse twenty one. For even hereunto were ye called, but Christ because Christ also suffered for us. We read the text in Hebrews five. He learned obedience through his suffering. Peter says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow in his steps. Now, I always use the acronym, the C, the D, the E. It's the cross and every spiritual benefit we receive. That's a real one will come through faith in what Christ did on the cross. The D, the doctrine, that's the doctrine of Christ. Those red letters we talk about every week, the cross, the doctrine, and there's the example. Not only was he the sinless son of God that died upon the cross to give us the covenant blessings to his covenant people, but he also lived a sinless life. And we look at how he lived and everything about everything Christ did is the example of what we should follow, just like the word of God says. So let's just pump a little leather. Well, let's let's read the text in John uh, 13 and beginning in verse four. And this is the text where at the Last Supper. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And it goes like this, John chapter 13, verse 4. He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, what I do, thou knowest not, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him. That was a little pride right there. Je whenever we try to resist what Jesus said or did, that's pride. Boy, mm -hmm. and Peter, he had to get some worked out of him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Peter saith unto him, thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus saith unto him, he that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I've done to you? Ye call me master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done unto you. Now, this is something that we have actually done. We have had foot washings. I've been to one and of those. You was at one of our foot washings up in when we was Evansville, wasn't you? Yeah. 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 I'd forgot of that to right now. And uh, down at our, our group meeting in Evansville with Cecil and Sue Cobb, they're going to have a foot washing down there real soon. And literally, uh, if you can get down on your hands and knees and literally wash someone's feet, and what I always do is pray for the person when you're washing their feet, pray for them. It totally transforms the way you think about people. Mm -hmm. It really does. And it, it's a great thing. And Jesus, and of course, this is the larger lesson of just humility in every aspect, but I think it is very right and proper to, in the communion service, to incorporate a foot washing just like he did. It's a powerful thing. I've heard, I've heard some thoughts on this topic is, uh, well, this is symbolic of just serving people because back then they wore sandals and there was no pavement and everybody's feet was dirty all the time. So that's why they did that. And now, you know, our feet are not, you know, we're, we've got socks and shoes and all this kind of stuff. So it's just symbolic. You know, what do you think about that? It certainly is symbolic of every aspect of humility in every part of our life. But it is also a concrete example that when we do 
the things Jesus said to do, we will be blessed. And that's what I say about all of God's law. Wherever wherever you can find the law of God, of course, some things in God's law just apply to men, some just apply to women. Some were just when Israel was in the land. And the Levitical priesthood is gone, thank God. We don't bring the the bulls and the goats anymore. But God's law never changes. And whenever we can apply something there, we'll be blessed by it. The things that do apply. The same thing with Christ. When we can apply and actually do this, I guarantee you, you'll be blessed. And you can do this in your home if it's just your family. Uh, dads, get down and wash your family's feet. And uh, wife, wash your husband's feet, your children's feet. And it, it's a it's a trans it's a it's a powerful thing. And what we would do. And we did this there in Evansville. The man would wash the man's feet. The women would wash the women's feet. And it's a beautiful thing and powerful. And I think that uh, the testimonies would abound because they're just, you see, when you're doing what he said to do, the Holy Spirit is going to really touch you in a deep way because you're being obedient. Yeah, I remember the guy, I don't remember who, I think it was your nephew or something that wa- ended up washing my feet. Mm-hmm. Or, or Kevin. is it your nephew or is it Donna's nephew? My nephew, Kevin. Uh-huh. Kevin. I think it was him. And yeah, he he uh, asked me if there was anything I needed prayer for. Yeah. And I told him something. I don't remember what I told him now. but And then, yeah, he was washing my feet and he was praying over that prayer request. It was pretty cool. That is cool, isn't it? It's great. It's great. Jesus is great. And when we just obey, it's it's beyond. It's supernatural. It's just awesome. The blessings of God that will come to us just out of simple obedience. Yeah. Now. Yeah.